So the purpose of this next clip is I've realized that I've only covered one issue and there's a couple of other issues which I'll be able to cover in not too much time. But there's actually a point that I haven't covered in regards to the first issue and that is about where did I come up with this 13%, 27%, 40% <laughs> figures from. And my answer to that is if we start off, I'm giving three illustrations very shortly. If we look at the USA, from 1789 till 1913, there were three taxes. There was a, a tax on domestic made goods, there was a sales tax. And that, depending on what state you lived in, it would have been maybe 4%, 8%, 10%. It varied from state to state. There was also a tax on imported goods from overseas. And finally, there was a tax on property. And also in that period, there, for a limited time, there was an income tax of up to 5%. And that was to pay the Civil War debt. That was the only time that we actually had that income tax up until 1913. And that was enough to pay for everything. During that period, there, there would have been a budget surplus in every single year, except for war years. And the national debt in 1913 was $1 billion, compared to some around $20 trillion today. So it's 20,000 times what it was up until 1913. So what does that tell you? You have three or four taxes and that's enough to cover everything. And in fact, in most years, there's a budget surplus. What does that tell you? Three or four taxes is enough if you limit it to just the essentials. Now you say, well, how does that equate to 13%? Well, if we take the amount of, of state tax, where when you bought something, you paid a sales tax, in some states it would have been 4%, in some states it would have been 8%, in some states it would have been 10%. So that means you're earning money, suppose you use up, say, only half of it. Because yes, the America, at, at least up until 1913, was a very, very wealthy nation. It was the envy of other nations. And over the years, they've, they've actually slipped. They're, they're not number one at the moment. Well, maybe they are, but not by much. So that means that if you're spending half of your money, and you're paying 8% tax, that's the same as paying 4% income tax. So with the state taxes, you know, it, it wouldn't have, it, it would have been pretty low. As, as far as you're earning a certain amount of money, would it be 13%? Well, with the illustration that I've just given in each state, it was a very small percentage. And the second argument is that if the state tax was 8%, you wouldn't be paying 8% of your income because if you're only using up half of your money, it's 8% multiplied by half of your money, which is 4%. The property tax would have been pretty small. You said, well, what, what about tariff taxes? What about imports? Well, that was actually pretty high, but, but very few things actually got imported because of that high tariff tax. When you have a high tariff tax, things become more expensive. So, in the United States' history from 1789 until 1913, most things got bought within the country because that's what tariffs actually do. So, okay, you, it might be a little bit more than 13% if we're using the example, but not by much. And then the second illustration to look at, this is just one illustration, would be what about New Zealand? Well, New Zealand, according to the New Zealand Encyclopedia, they looked at a particular time period and they found that tariffs, when we actually did have tariffs in the 1800s, and yes, we did have it in the 1900s, but it's looking at the the time period of the 1800s, that, that actually was enough. That actually covered 66% of our revenue. So if we're looking at would three taxes, like the American system, have been enough to provide the essential services? The answer is yes, because just the tariff in itself was covering 66% of revenue. And then the third example is something that's a little bit more recent. When I was studying economics, this was years ago, I read that in the Philippines, government spending to GDP is 13%, whereas over here it's 40%. So what does that mean? It means that if you take 
the amount the average person earns. That's one way of saying GDP. GDP is the measurement of all of your transactions. That would include all of the wages everybody's getting, all the profits that the business is, is making. And if the Philippines is 13% of GDP, what does that tell you? That tells you 13% is enough. So yeah, it might be a little bit more than 13%, but it wouldn't be much more than 13%. So I think my, my figures of 13%, 27%, 40% are, are pretty close. Okay, so then what are the next two issues? Well, the next issue is about growing our economy. And with the issues that I've, I've talked about, we have to take a look at why are we having these problems? Is it because we're not paying enough tax? Well, actually, I think we're paying plenty of tax. We're just not getting our, our money's worth. And one of the factors is, are we actually really growing our economy? Now, the National Economist, the National Party Economist will, will tell you different because what they will tell you is they will tell you Oh, uh, yeah, well, well, we have a good growth. We're having growth of, and they'll throw some figures at you, but here's the thing. Our economy might be growing like this, but the amount of people who come into the country and the people being born, I'm not trying to pick on any group of people, outweighs that growth in GDP. So this GDP, that the GDP figure might sound pretty good. Oh, look, we've, we've had GDP growth of this amount. But when you actually take into account the amount of extra people who are being born and the amount of extra people who are coming into this country, we're actually not really growing at all. I'm talking about if we were to take a look at the last nine years, and you take, take a look at the amount of people who've come into the country, the amount of people who've been born and the amount of extra GDP, it's either nothing or not much at all, or it could even be negative. So somewhere along the lines that they're telling us about how great it is, oh, the GDP growth is good, but it's not. It's really not that good at all. So something is, is not happening, and I think that's one of the the issues, that's why we're actually paying all this money and we're getting thin services. And what I will say is I think the, the big issue is that we're only really exporting one thing. We're exporting meat, we're exporting dairy, we're dealing in the food industry, and we're barely exporting anything other than that. And until we can become competitive, in exporting other things, we're not getting anywhere. So yeah, that's, that's actually the, the second issue is, hey, what are you actually doing to address this issue? Or first of all, if, if we want to keep it the big and the broad, you're actually not really growing our economy. You're not. You're not really growing our economy when you actually take into account the amount of extra people coming into the country. You're, you're not. And like I say, in my view, you will have a different view, but I think when it comes to it, it's about export competitiveness. And there's all sorts of things that I, I could be saying. I could also be bringing up the whole thing about productivity. What is the government doing to actually increase our productivity? What is the government doing in that regards? And not just the people's productivity, I'm talking about technological productivity. According to Gareth Morgan's book, and I'm, I'm not a fan of him, of him at the moment because of some of the things that he's recently come up 